a fairly common and unfair criticism of GNU slash Linux and open source software generally is that it's poorly designed and offers a bad user experience and user interface. People seem to think that free software projects have no dedicated design teams who work exclusively on designing how things should work and how the user interface should look and feel. Instead, they think that the user experience of free software is designed by programmers who have no idea what they're doing and are basically designing as they go along. This idea has been around for a while, but it's gotten a lot more traction recently thanks to a video titled Why Are Open Source Alternatives So Bad? by a fellow tech YouTuber called Eric Murphy, who weirdly enough, despite making a claim like this, seems to be a Linux user themselves. I'm making this video in response to Eric's video, and to say that the idea that FOSS software is poorly designed is only true in a very limited number of cases. Most FOSS software is actually very well designed. First, I want to talk about two projects that I admire for having really well designed software, GNOME and Elementary OS. If you use the software from either one of these projects, it's clear how intentionally designed they are. Everything works in a consistent way across these projects' various applications, and everything is relatively easy to get to grips with. Furthermore, both Elementary OS and GNOME make software that I would very much describe as eye candy. Certainly you'd never say that this software looks like it's from the 90s, as Eric claims in his video. In fact, I think that Elementary OS has the potential to make a lot of Windows users very jealous. This good design may be as a result of GNOME having a dedicated team of designers who keep everything cohesive, as well as a human interface guidelines document that can even be used by third-party developers to keep their own applications consistent with the GNOME design philosophy. Elementary OS is another good example of this. They also offer extensive design guidelines that demonstrate how much they've considered the user experience of their software. Both of these software projects have a clear and unique design philosophy that certainly isn't made up as the developers go along. It's also worth pointing out that FOSS programs are very often based around existing paradigms. What I mean by that is if you sat a Windows user in front of Oh, I don't know, a Linux computer with something like XFCE, Firefox, and LibreOffice, for example, they'd probably have no difficulty getting things done, because ultimately the design work in software space is a lot of copying what already works. FOSS software does it, proprietary software does it, but I've got to say, FOSS software does it pretty well. So, if the claim that FOSS software is poorly designed isn't true, then where exactly does it come from? Well, I think that there are two main sources. People who have used Linux and or free software briefly, but not for long enough to understand how to use it properly, and people who notice a few FOSS applications are poorly designed, and over-exaggerate by saying that all FOSS applications are poorly designed. I can at least understand people who feel that FOSS software is poorly designed because they aren't familiar with it. Something like GNOME, for instance, is very well designed, but it's also radically different from the Windows desktop experience. The GNOME desktop doesn't have a taskbar, and most GNOME apps make use of hamburger menus, rather than the more traditional menu bar that Windows uses. These things introduce a steep learning curve, but they don't mean that GNOME is poorly designed. Quite the opposite, in fact. They demonstrate that the GNOME team have thought enough about their user experience to create something truly unique. I think the same thing is true for a lot of other FOSS projects. Another source of this claim is that some FOSS software genuinely is poorly designed. And I mean, hey, they can't all be winners. A commonly cited example of this is GIMP, an image editing program with one of the worst names I have ever heard. For as much as I love GIMP, I have to admit that a lot of common tasks are quite difficult to perform using it, unfortunately in part as a result of poor design. For example, as Eric pointed out in their video, there's still no good way to select text or select multiple layers. That said though, 
There is another open source image editing program called Krita. It's far better designed, so I'd invite anyone who says that professional FOSS tools inherently suck to try out Krita. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. None of this is to say that GIMP is bad, though. I used it for several years before switching to Krita, and I never really had any major issues with it. I just like Krita better. It's also worth pointing out that there's a lot of proprietary software out there that's awfully designed too. Take Microsoft Windows, for example. It has two different user interface paradigms in one operating system. The modern Metro user interface and the classic Windows user interface that's still used by most applications. It also has two different settings applications, the modern settings app and the classic control center. There's no clear way to know which setting will be in which application, and a lot of settings are actually in both applications. All of this makes Windows an astonishingly poorly designed piece of software that is far worse than any FOSS software I have ever used. Also, in their video, Eric states that the Adobe Suite is an example of good design, but personally, I've experienced nothing but pain and misery with it. I also think the fact that Adobe and Microsoft can put out software that's poorly designed shoots down the theory that free software is inherently poorly designed due to lack of funding. If you can make software that sucks with billions of dollars, it follows that you can also make software that doesn't suck with zero dollars. So in conclusion, I would say that free and open source software is no more prone to bad design than any other software. Furthermore, there's no systemic issue that could cause free software to have bad design. As we've seen in this video, free software projects often have teams specifically set up to design the user experience, as well as very extensive user interface and design documents. So, I really wouldn't put too much faith in people who say that FOSS software is inherently poorly designed, because as with any claim that says things are inherently one way or another, it just isn't that simple. Also, free software is usually free of cost, so don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Finally, I want to caution against people making claims like the one we discussed in this video. When people say things like, all FOSS software sucks, they're discouraging people who might otherwise want to try out some free software, and who might benefit greatly from it. Instead, people should make more reasonable claims. If you believe that one particular piece of FOSS software sucks, then tell people about better alternatives. Don't just write off FOSS software entirely. With all that said though, that's it for today's video. I hope that it was insightful and you learned something about the design work that goes into FOSS software. If you liked this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, because it really helps the channel out. But with that said, I hope to see you all in the next video, and as always, thanks for watching.